Hello, this is the Donald. You're watching the one channel that's absolutely, positively, not fake news. You're watching Send TV. Directly from San High School Studio 231, this is Sen TV Season 3. Starring Cassandra Cabrera, Cameron Fleener, Hassan Gordon, Kendall Jackson, Philip Johnson. Bill Siddiqui, Paula Trejo, Kayla Williams, and featuring the members of our broadcast journalism one. In this episode, we will take a look at Sen becoming an official Illinois Democracy School, a tribute to Miss Jenny Goas, another sensational story featuring English teacher Miss Crystal Lennox and many other stories. Let's turn it over to our anchors, Hassan Gordon and Paula Trail. Microphone's Trail. on, camera's ready. All right, three, two, one. Action! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another exciting episode of Send TV. I'm your anchor, Paula Trejo. And I'm also your anchor, Hassan Gordon. It's great to be back for another episode, but first, let's jump into our general announcements for the week. This past Saturday, SIN welcomed the class of 2022 and their families at an annual open house. Our future Bulldogs embarked on the tour around the school where they meet their future teachers, got familiar with the school, and also heard about the different programs SIN offers from a student panel. Let's take a quick recap of the event itself. My role is lead producer. I produce the episodes, also producing content, and also produce the graphics and all of that. Okay, um, I'm one of the, the lead anchors along with Kayla, and I'll tackle some of the other projects around the school, like the Megan Dunn piece, or just pieces about clubs sometimes, or just like just pieces here and there that have to do with either the school or outside of the school. Mm -hmm. And um, Nabil is the assistant producer. He's basically kind of my right hand. Bulldogs, with the first quarter ending this past Thursday, your report card will be given to you at parent-teacher conference. Thursday, November 16th from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Yes, you will have to bring your parent to pick up your report card. Parent-teacher conference is very important to creating a partnership between your parents, teacher, and of course the student to improve your grades before semester one ends. Let's continue to have a sensational grades and attendance for the rest of the year. November 16th will be SEN's annual pasta dinner fundraiser at 5.30. For those who don't know what our annual pasta dinner is, our student council created the idea to fund SEN's in-house student scholarship program to alleviate pressure off of seniors back for their next step to college. They do that by serving pasta and other foods and also charging an entrance fee of $15 if you're 13 and above and $5 if you're younger. Come support the fundraiser as it helps one senior with paying off college. Visual art students will hold their always exciting visual art fall showcase Thursday, November 9th, 5 p.m. to 7.30 p.m in the Sen Hall vestibule. Vestibule, weird word, but basically in the inner main entrance, Sen Hall. The visual art showcase is definitely a unique event that displays the amazing talent of all our visual art students hold. There is a suggest suggested donation, $5, but please come and support your school artists. Sen is now officially recognized as a democracy school, which shows the school's commitment to providing students with a positive environment to unlock each student's potential to prepare them for a successful life. So the reason that we're here today is to talk about Sen's recognition as a democracy school and what that means. So a democracy school means that we like to promote, promote uh, student voices in the school and we know how important it is for each individual student to have um, a role in the school and have their voice heard. Cool. 
think being a democracy school um, looks different inside the school building than it does outside of the school building. Inside it means that every student here has a voice. They feel like they're a contributing member of the community and that what they want to contribute matters just as much as the adults in the building. I think it's really important that they have opportunities to kind of see what their community looks like and see how they can participate in that community both as um, both as leaders and as people who are really interested in kind of advancing the development of the community. It means that we're, uh, as, a, as a high school, we're aligned with, more aligned with our mission um, to create actively responsible, globally minded citizens. Set High School represents one of the most diverse schools in the city, the state, or I would say the country. People from every background. And it's a special place where you see that diversity. It's important, especially at this time, that you as young people stand up for that unity and that diversity. How does it feel being so young and having a choice of what goes on in your school? It feels very good because I know not every generation has that. So it's like since we have it, it's like we should use it because we never know if it doesn't work out, then this, like the school might take it away. So it's like we should use it to the best of its ability. For, for one, we're not wearing uniforms because of the student council. So it's like if we want more changes in the school and get the life that we want in high school, then we should get our voices out. These drugs are no cure. More so a biochemical apology driving my body to forget what may never don't tell, never stop, never kill, never be forgotten. I asked Khalif what he would bring next Friday. He said, every cell on this earth. It starts here when you're 15, 16, 17, 18 years old. So sending recognizes the migrants to school, I think, is a critical component to doing it. Previous school year, we lost a strong component here in the math department at Sen. Miss Jennifer Goes lost her battle with breast cancer, but pain is often soothed with love. And Miss Goes was loved by her students and staff. Her mark was permanent and unavoidable. Our very own Kendall Jackson Jr. created a tribute piece. You get no respect in to some. This is Sen's Lady Bulldog cheerleading team. This cheerleading team is doing a routine to engage students in school spirit, bring students and staff together on one common ground. It's the minor things we overlook about our high school experience that, if it didn't exist, we'll question it forever. This person left a mark on the Lady Bulldogs, who will continue to keep our memory and spirit alive through cheer. This person being Jenny Goes. A math teacher who once walked down the same halls as us tragically passed away May 20th, 2017 from triple negative breast cancer. Her passing left a void in many, but the foundation she left here continues to live on. She was like our original cheerleading coach. We didn't have cheerleaders the year before she came and she came and she really helped start and kind of rejuvenate the team. So I think that was really important. Um, I think she was here a pretty short period of time uh, at Sun, but um, you know she's taught in other CPS schools. And her experience, well, I mean our experience with her as a teacher here at Sun, I think was ex incredibly positive. Everybody, you know, kids who had her loved her, um, adults loved her. We we thought she was a great teacher. The Lady Bulldogs not only kept Ms. Goy's memory alive by putting on an amazing show at the pep rally and homecoming game but also becoming Team Pink and wearing pink bows and pink socks to acknowledge his go as battle with breast cancer and create awareness for it. Uh, very good. Thanks so much for coming in. Uh, oh, I, I want you to. <laughs> Recently, Sin TV and Miss Nicole Flores, a very close friend of Miss Goas, had a wonderful opportunity to give Miss Goas' his mom, brother, and sister a tour of the school and how much Goas was loved inside the halls of Sen. Oh, I wanted to give you these. I had some of her stuff that I was going uh, through, and these are some notes from her um, old students, and so uh, I thought that was where probably best to be with you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I know. So this is where we spent literally 90% of our time was in this room. We ate lunch together in here. We, we actually lucked out to have our schedule was exactly the same with respect to the periods that we Three had periods off. And so all of our three nice. periods were together. We had lunch every day together. We, you know, I 
talked well, in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. We talked about random stuff in the morning. <laughs> Let's go ask for help. Oh, should we be like your tutor? Yeah. Okay. Brittany and I didn't start off on a good foot, yeah. but then we ended on a great one, yeah. right? And so she needed a little bit extra help, and Miss Goaz was, oh, was kind yeah. of that person. Yeah. So they developed their own nice relationship. We're here talking about the Jenny Goaz Silverman Foundation, which is um, created by some of her friends in Chicago, and they're uh, raising money through multiple events to raise money for a scholarship, a couple scholarships for students here at uh, Sen High and uh, also raising money for awareness and research for the BRCA gene and the negative... Um, triple negative. The triple negative gene. Um, we know that Jenny started uh, a cheerleader team here and it's had a great impact. And we saw the appreciation that they gave to Jenny. We saw their uh, pink bows kind of paying homage to Jenny. So we just love that and say thank you so much to you guys. And thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, really appreciated that. And it's good to know that Jenny's made a lasting impact at the school and we see the impact she's made on the teachers, the students, the faculty. So we really just appreciate that and that makes us feel good that, you know, she, it's tragic what happened, but she made such a great impact on everybody and we just really appreciate that. We'll be back <laughs> all the time. Last month, one of our inspiring sophomore correspondents, April Poltak, had the opportunity to meet with State Representative Kelly Cassidy about the push to legalize cannabis in the state of Illinois. It's definitely an interesting conversation to have, so let's check it out. I am the lead sponsor in the House, along with uh, Senator Heather Staines, who's the Senate sponsor of the bills that would allow for adult use um, cannabis uh, of, of cannabis um, in a taxed and regulated market um, using the model of our medical cannabis program which is one of the most highly regulated in the country um, and really just building on that and creating access for folks to a safe and regulated product um, getting it out of the the hands of criminal cartels and you know uh, hopefully having the added benefit of making our streets a little safer. So the bill, as it's currently written, um, would permit uh, adults 21 and over to uh, purchase and possess up to an ounce of cannabis. You know, frankly, the more you know, the more you know. And I think that um, the, the years of just say no were a failure. The war on drugs has been a failure. That doesn't mean that, that the answer is to say, smoke them if you got them, because that's certainly not my message. I think that honest discussion about what the impact of cannabis use on a developing brain is, is way more useful than just trying to scare somebody. But the reality is, you know, prohibition has failed. Um, we learned that about alcohol, and it's very true as well with, with, with cannabis. But for me, the social justice impact is the most important thing. We've spent decades incarcerating brown and black men uh, for, for selling this product. We've created these alternative economies and alternative justice systems and communities that we can begin to dismantle by taking this product uh, out of the illegal market. Ultimately, the, the community will be safer. Um, we will take a, you know, a big chunk out of the illegal drug market on our streets. Um, we will create a safer product for sale in a legitimate retail establishment, we'll create jobs, we will create um, opportunity, business opportunity for, for folks who might not already have that, um, and, and we'll create um, you know, a mechanism by which uh, you know, we can bring new revenue into our school system, into our public health system, um, you know, and, and do some real good with the, the funds that can come from this. Hassan, get in tune, stupid. Uh, what do you mean? You don't know what that means? Don't you listen to WGCI? Who listens to the radio anymore? See, never mind. We had one of the best DJs in Chicago, DJ Moondog, stop by his studio a couple weeks ago to talk about the love he has for Send TV and a competition we will be participating in very soon. 
Hey Bulldogs, my name is Kendall Jackson Jr. I am the senior correspondent here today. I'm here with the legendary, the man, the myth, DJ Moondog of WGCI. And I'm going to go and ask him a couple questions, if that's okay with him. Yeah, let's do it. So what made you start doing DJing? Uh, DJing really was just from being in uh, Jamaica and Kingston, uh, seeing all the parties out there hanging out with sean paul and beanie man in, in the clubs and it was incredible to see what the djs they call them selectors out there what the selectors were doing the club how everybody would just go crazy and so it stood with me you know and i came back to chicago and uh and it just took a life on its own i became a dj that's great that's great you know wgci was like such a fundamental part of me growing up like what is your like what is your goal to like inspire other children listening through radio to listen to music and you know get them the best hits and, you know not just recycle stuff yeah uh i think really i always say like radio was like um it's like selling a car right like um when you go to like a lambo dealer right you see the lambo sitting out there it looks pretty you know what a lambo is you know the name the brand right it's, it's yeah. dope in itself right but when you go to the lot if no one's there to greet you and be like, yo, let me show you all the, look at the hood, look at look at the trunk, look at the leather, this plush leather. If there's no one there to sell you on the, on that Lambo, even still, you're not gonna buy it, right? It's just gonna sit there, right? So I look at it like with, with radio, it's like I'm the salesman, if you will. I'm like bridging the gap. I'm letting, you know, telling people like, yo, this song is so dope, here's why. Yo, rock with this joint, or here's what's popping right now, I'm trying to put them on. And so for me, it's just about connecting people with the music so that they feel some type of way about it, whether it makes them want to uh, throw their hands up, whether they want to make ladies twerk in their car, wherever they're at right there. You know what I'm saying? It's just about connecting the two together so that people feel some uh, some kind of a feeling when they hear the music. That's great. That's great. So uh, I don't see any turntables or anything here. So why are you here? Like, why are you here at Sin High School? What are you trying to promote? Uh, yeah, so I'm here with Walgreens Expressions Challenge, uh, moving around to different um, high schools all across the city. Uh, just encourage everybody to take part in this this contest where they can uh, create some kind of art, video, music, rap, sing, dance, uh, visual stuff, uh, graphic design, any kind of just art, a talent they have where they can talk about an issue, something important. You know, whether it's uh, bullying, we just talked about a second ago, whether it's uh, um, um, violence or sex, whatever, all these kind of topics that are important that like when you sit down at lunch with your, with your friends and whatever, the things you talk about, you know what I'm saying? And putting that, tying those two together, your art with some kind of a message and sharing it uh, for a chance to win two bands, $2,000. On top of that, I'm going to give away a GCI prize pack of uh, probably some tickets like Big Jam or some other stuff. We'll figure it all out. But, you know, we, I think we all know like CPS is struggling with money. You know what I'm saying? A lot of, a lot of uh, schools um, don't have, I mean, what you guys have here is a dope setup. You know, a lot of other schools are not fortunate and stuff. So it gives me a chance to come out and see what, what other schools have. And then I try to help out with getting them some stuff as well to uh, um, be able for them to create. And I, I you know me being a creative type as well, man, it's important that um, everyone has an opportunity if they want to, to, to express themselves through whatever art it is. And here you got a dope setup with the, with TV, um, uh, TV shows and all that. So I, I like what y'all doing. Another episode, another segment of Sensational Stories. For those who don't know, Sensational Stories is our segment dedicated to profile pieces about our fellow Bulldogs, teachers, and staff. For this segment of Sensational Stories, Kendall Jackson Jr. and Nabil Siddiqui interviewed new teacher, Miss Crystal Lennox. Let's take a look. My name is Crystal Lennox. I teach English uh, Literature 10th and 12th grade, and this is Sensational Stories. I went to um, San Ignatius for high school, then Northwestern, then Harvard for grad school. Um, I haven't always wanted to be a teacher, but I've always loved to read, and my mom is actually a principal for 30 years. I didn't see a lot of, like, it was a lot of middle class, and I was like, okay. So I, I'm still teaching, and I feel like I'm making a difference, but I'm, I want more, like, urban. I want, I want kids who I grew up with, you know what I'm saying? And so that's when I was like, okay, Sin may be the place, so let me try to go to Sin. 
I see a lot of different types of students and I love having that diversity of different types of students and different types of learners. Um, it was kind of overwhelming. It's huge. I mean, sin is huge. All right. So, one thing I forgot about today, we should do the reading log today, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. So, we're pushing that to Monday. Oh, oh, Monday. 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 So there were times when I was the only black person in the room. There were times where I was the only black woman in the room. So sometimes teachers would say, oh, Crystal, as the black person in the room, what do you feel, right? And I would be like, why am I the spokesperson for my race? That's not fair, that's not cool, that's not what I'm here for. I'm not here to speak for an entire race. Um, and so there, there were microaggressions that happened to me in college. Um, can I touch your hair? Right. Oh, you speak so eloquently for a black person. So the way I embrace African-American culture is by immersing myself in my own culture and not really shying away from it. Um, at Northwestern, I, like freshman year, I didn't want to be like the stereotypical angry black woman. So then I tried to be in different communities that I really wasn't a part of. I saw the, the flaw in that because yes, I am black and yes, I am powerful. So I need to network with people who share that power and also to avoid my race is to avoid myself. I think the number one thing is for students to realize that I'm always here for them um, and that they haven't disappointed me if they don't achieve their personal best. So if their personal best is a C out of the class and they get a C, I will be just as proud of them as a student who their personal best was an A and they got the A. Just because your family hasn't, hasn't done something that you really want to do, that doesn't mean that you should just say, oh, I can't do it because nobody has done it before me. Like, rise to the occasion. That's something, that's your dream. Fulfill your dream. Wow, a Harvard graduate that teaches here at SEND? Yeah, that's crazy. She went to Northwestern and Harvard. She literally went to one of the best schools in America and still faced struggles with people treating her like an outcast. That's why SEND must have been the perfect fit for her. This school is heavily diverse and we all try to educate each other about ourselves. It's funny that you bring up diversity. One of our Broadcast One correspondents decided to do a piece on upcoming Japanese tech that might change your love life. Gatebox is a new Japanese technology that was created in 2016. It is the world's first holographic communication robot that allows you to live with your favorite character. The character is projected in a tube that takes part in conversation and can be hooked up to your home network in order to automate certain tasks such as turning off and on your lights or remind you about the weather. You know what, it's just, it's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> so it essentially gets rid of the need for a spouse or significant other. Oh, she can text. Wow. That's weird. She seems so sweet. It's imaginary. It's a computer. His house. He's in love with her. I feel like it, this is kind of like a girlfriend for people who can't get one. I first thought it's kind of sad. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little sad. It is a little sad because you would, you would prefer to be in a relationship with a human being. Absolutely. I thought it was really cool. I didn't know anything like that existed. It, uh, it reminded me of a movie that I saw called Her. Makes me a little uncomfortable. Um. I can see how the home robot can be helpful, turning on his lights before he got home, turning on the air conditioning before he got home, 
but sending the messages in between saying that she misses him and he misses her, that stuff seemed a little weird. That's just another way people who get totally into having relationships with electronics. That's another way for them to have like a set of people. Yeah, I think I think it is all. I, I agree with Mr. Stankwitz. I think this is kind of a, a sad narrative in our reliance and over reliance on technology and the fact that because of our work schedules, maybe we don't have time in certain places like in Japan and, and even in the United States to actually develop cultivate relationships with human beings, which is kind of a sad, a sad thing. Yeah. Um, maybe for a week or so, it'd be fun to just um, mess around with and, and have a little, uh, little companion by my side, by my bed. There's no reason not to. It reminds you to check the weather, reminds you things that you don't normally remember. I don't think I would get one, though. I think, because, like, real-life connection is better than having to buy something who looks like a hentai character. No, if it's $25,000, um, well, well, like, I will buy it, and I will just get a job and just work for the money. Um, I don't care. I'm still going to find ways to try to get it, and yeah. No, because I'm so fabulous that I already had a lot of boyfriends, so... I feel bad for him. Because he couldn't, he can't, he doesn't, he couldn't find um, any loved ones, you know. But he wasn't there. It's my favorite time of the show. I spur to recap with our always entertaining Philip Johnson White. Yo, what's good? My name is Philip Johnson White, the man who dresses with eloquence, and today I'll be bringing you more sports. The boys basketball team has trials November 7th through 9th, 3.30 to 6 p.m. Be sure you guys have your sports physical in hand if you're trying to be the next big thing and send basketball history and tryhards. Let's take a moment to congratulate the boys' soccer team who finished the season at 7-6-3 and won five games in conference. I know you guys never have a lot of coverage, and I'm trying to give you guys coverage, and that will be in the next episode. All right, that's all the time I have for today. My name is King Philip Johnson White III, and I'll catch you in the next episode. Back to you, Paula and Hassan Flash Gordon. Another sensational episode in the books. And that's a special fifth episode this year. It kind of feels like our 50th episode. Plus, we didn't do anything special for it. Well, having us as anchors back to back for two episodes is pretty special, don't you think? Well, I mean, we barely talked this episode and not at all the last episode. Okay, let's just end this. This has been episode five and my name is Asan Gordon. And I'm Paula Trejo signing off from Sen TV. Toots, Toots McGoots.